it turned out so nice, it's ridiculous. <laughs> What's up KDVads and welcome back to the channel this week. This should be the first video of June so happy new month. I hope you guys are having an amazing week and an amazing new month of June. In this video I am going to be making my favorite pair of summer shorts. I'm going to be using Ankara and working from my new Kim Day PDF trouser pattern. So I'm going to be showing you guys the full process, how I assemble the pattern, trace out my size and and sort of like redesign it for shorts that has a waistband and has a fly in the front for the zip so if you want to see how that works make sure to keep on watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it share it with anyone that you think would find it useful or inspiring to watch I'm going to share all the links measurements and any other information that I think you guys will find useful in the description box down below but with that being said let's get into this video a video the pattern I'm going to be using in this video is the new Kim Dave PDF printable pattern. This you can print from the comfort of your home on normal A4 paper using any regular printer that you have. And once you have all of the pieces out, you essentially just connect them in such a way that you have your front and your back patterns. Now it comes in a UK size 6 to 20 and it has a page with printing instructions as well as a size chart so you know what size suits you better in this plan now it's really easy to assemble it has like points that you just need to connect together it is numbered in such a way that all of the panels are meant to go with each other you sort of see indicators there and i will just trim it down along the dashed lines that normally appear around every a4 sheet and once you've trimmed it down like that you essentially just tape it down to the corresponding side like it's here so once you have taped down all of your panels the pieces for the front and for the back you should have the plan like this now me i'm going to be keeping my plan like this because if i have to do a trouser for someone who is a size 16 or 18 at least i already have the pan plan here and i just literally have to go back and trace off the size that i need for that project Okay, so I have assembled my patterns and I've set it to the side. The pattern goes from a UK size 6 to 20 and at the moment I'm kind of like in between sizes. Like I have full hips but my waist is on the smaller side. So I tend to work with size 10 measurements for the bottom half of my body and size 8 for the top half. Sort of varies and depends on the style of the garment but for this PDF I am using a size 10 and this is what I look like. My waist is like a 29, my hips is like um, 39 to 40, depending on the time of the month. But that's what I am going to be working with for this video. So in terms of the fabric, I'm going to be using Ankara because it's summer, there's no better time to wear print and color than when it's actually warm and bright. And I'm going to be using this print here that has purple, red, green, yellow as in the color mix is just so beautiful so now we have our fabric i also got myself a nice um button nice black button because the shorts is going to have a waistband and i'm going to be putting a button on the front i also got some air uh, interlining interfacing i never really know the right name to use but sha iron on interfacing let's call it that for this video if you know the right name just let us know in the comment section down below this is the one that one side has the glue and the other side doesn't so you can iron it onto your fabric i got some of this to reinforce my waistband i also grabbed a short black zip that i'm going to be putting on the front of the shorts now you have the freedom to add pockets to yours, pockets on the front, pocket on the back. I'm going to link, I don't know if it's this side of the screen, I think it's this side or this side. I'm going to link um, pocket tutorials I've done in the past. I think I've done like three or four different pocket styles on this channel. I've done a single weld, a double weld, I've done um, a side pocket, I think I've also shown in seam pockets at some point so you can choose any of those pocket styles to add to yours. But with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how I redesign or restyle the basic trouser pattern to shorts that 
I'm going to be showing you guys how to make in this video. So if you'd like to see how that works, make sure to keep on watching. Now, because I want to keep the plan as it is for the front and the back, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be tracing off the size that I want to work with. So as I mentioned earlier on, I am a size 10 at the moment. That really varies from time to time, but I'm just going to be working with that for this video. So I'm just going to trace off the size 10 around the waist, the sides, the darts. I'm going to do this for the front and the back trousers. So I have that traced off version to make any changes or to modify in this video so now that i have my traced off pieces for my back and my front as you can see here don't forget to transfer the darts along the waist transfer the notches where the hip line is where around the knee is as well as any other thing that you think you would find useful if you wanted to do this project for yourself so now that we have this here i'm going to be starting from my front and the first thing i'm going to be doing is to add a zipper fly now you can have your zip on the side but because i want a zip on my center front i'm going to be going into the center front of my front plan like this and i'm just taping some extra paper along this edge like so now along this taped extended edge i'm going to be extending the center front by about two inches and this is going to become my zipper fly so i'm going to have a straight line on this side like so and have the bottom curve in towards the extended edge that notch at the bottom is where the hip line is just for reference then i'm going to connect it to the waistline of the front so now that we have this here the next thing i'm going to be doing is to create the waistband now the kind of waistband i'm going to create is one that that is two inches wide for starters along the waistline and I'm not going to be including that in the main short pattern so the waistband is going to be a separate pattern from the short itself and before I trace off the waistband I'm going to be folding away the dart because I don't want to have a dart in my waistband you can have it in yours if you want to but I just like to have like smooth waistband around my waist so once I have that folded away and taped down, I'm going to get some pattern paper and trace off the waistband, add a seam allowance along the top and the center front edge like so. Because this plan that I traced out already had a seam allowance on the side seam, I didn't need to add seam allowance there. So now that we have the waistband done, I'm going in to plan my short. It is 15 inches long, so it's not super short, but it is above my knee. So once I have that marked like that, I'm just drawing in the hemline of the shorts. And when I trace off the shorts pattern, I include the dart that is below the waistband. So I'm just going to grab some paper and trace off my shorts, include the, the fly extension that we did, the darts, my grain line and for that hemline now this is very important with short fold it upwards and trace off the shape along the inner and the outer leg because when you fold that up along your hem it will be a lot easier to stitch around Now that we have the patterns for the front done, the back was essentially the same method. You have your back plan and then along that back plan, you fold in the darts, you draw in your waistband. The waistband has to be the same width as the front and then you trace off your back shorts and the back short has to be the same length as the front, which was 15 inches. So once you follow the same things we did for the front, you should end up with a back waistband that does not have the darts along the waist with all necessary seam allowance added and then you should have your shorts a pattern which would have the bottom side of the darts would have a one centimeter hem allowance or however much hem allowance you like to work with don't forget to transfer your notches especially for the one around your crouch um, depth because that has to connect to the front as well so now that we have our patterns done we can go ahead to think about how we're going to cut this onto fabric so the only patterns you need for this is just your back and front your main shorts and your waistband you have the freedom to add pockets if you want to and there are very different, very various styles of pockets that you could possibly consider to include to yours if that's what you are looking to do. 
So I'm done with all of the patterns for the front and the back. I've just gone in to quickly pin down the main front and back shorts and cut out how many pieces I need. Then after cutting out the waistband, I'm actually going to go in and fuse some interfacing on the wrong side of the material. And this is going to help the waistband to be nice and stiff around the waist. I just wanted to say that the style of this short, it's high-waisted. I normally like my trousers and my bottoms to be high-waisted because it just helps to shape my waist a lot nicer. You can decide to drop your waistline even lower if that's what you prefer. But the pattern block itself, it's a high waist. That rides above the belly button i just wanted to say that because i know someone is going to be like oh it's too high on the waist it's not really my style but you have the freedom to change that to whatever preference that you like so i'm going to cut out my pieces i have them here i have my what's this i have the back i have the back here and i have the front just going to go ahead and cut them all out and fuse the waistband and i will check in with you guys so i'm just going in here to cut out all of the pieces for my shorts because this print has a very chaotic and abstract like pattern and direction i didn't really need to pay a lot of attention to the placement of the pattern against the print i literally just cut along the grain line i cut my front and my back pieces as you can see here i did the same thing for the waistband as well and once i had all of my pieces cut out i went ahead to fuse all of my waistband pieces with some interfacing on the wrong side now for the waistband you need to cut two pairs because you want to have a finished nice seam along the top of the waistband edge so you need to cut two pairs for your front and two pairs for your back after that i'm just going in to overlock around all of the short pieces and the first thing i'm going to be doing is working on my front now i've placed the right sides together of my front panels and i'm going to be drawing in the original center front line because that's where my zip is going to sit now i'm marking where my zip is going to end along this point like so and i'm drawing in my center front line like that because i kept a notch on the waistline so that would help me know where the center front edge is now when sewing this particular point here you sew with a normal stitch from the bottom of the crouch like so up until the point that the zip is going to stop you do a back stitch to secure that and then you change to a loser stitch that we will be removing later on to sew the rest of that seam all the way to the front now from doing this it would help you to have a straight zip along the front of your shorts or your trouser and it just make your life a lot easier so I went ahead to press that seam open like so and this is what it looks like and I also labeled what side is my right and what side is my front. This is very important so you have your zip facing the right direction. Now I'm grabbing my zip and I am going to be joining the right side of the zip to the right side of the fly first. I like to always add pins when I don't want things to go crazy or move around one or two should do and then i'm going to be sewing just on the fly that side of the zip tape and i'm going to take this to my machine and i'm going to change to my zip footer which is a slightly narrow footer that would allow the machine to move as i stitch along and once i'm done stitching it like this i'm going to go back in and fold over the zip like this and do a very slim edge stitch to keep the zip nice and flat on this side now once you are done doing that this is what it should look like for the next step you would essentially need to fold the fly over so you attach the left side of the zip to the left side of the fly like i said earlier on you have the option to add pins if you want to but if you are confident you could just grab that and take it to your machine and essentially just sew from one edge to the other at this point we're only sewing zipper to the fly itself now after sewing this, this is what it should look like. The front is still closed because we want our zip to be straight and that seam is going to help us to do that. Now taking the pin, I'm going to mark where the zip stops along that center front edge because that is going to help me sew in the curved edge of the next stitch that we're going to be creating now i'm going to take this to my machine i'm going to sew a stitch that goes from the top of the waistline and curves towards the bottom 
Now, when you start to sew at the top, you should have your fly open like this, and we are sewing on this side of the short. Now, you sew a straight stitch. Mine wasn't so straight because I can't sew a straight stitch to save my life. You can draw in this stitch if you want to have it more accurate. Then, as you get towards the bottom, you close the fly together like so. You drop your needle back in and then you continue to sew and curve in towards the center front edge like this. This is going to keep the bottom edge of the fly closed and just keep it intact. The other option you can do is to sew the straight side first, turn it to the back, and then do the curved end on the wrong side of the shirt. I hope that made sense. That's something you could consider doing if what I demonstrated earlier was a bit too tricky for you. Now, after doing that, the next thing I'm doing here is to unpick the, the seam that we did with the loose stitch that helped us to create a straight zip to reveal the zip like this. So once you unpick that seam, this is what the fly should look like. It turned out pretty cool, except for my slightly wonky stitch on the front of the shorts. So once you have that, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to join the back of the shorts along that crouch seam like so. I'm going to be sewing all the way from the bottom to the top on a one centimeter seam allowance, giving this a nice press to open it up before grabbing my front piece, which now has a zip on it. And I'm going to be joining them together along the sides and along the inseam or the inner leg on a one centimeter seam allowance. Sewing with a normal straight stitch, I'm going to be connecting the back and the front of the shorts together so I can give it a quick test to see how the fit is like on my body. Okay, so I have popped on the shorts. <laughs> the pattern clash is just crazy. But I've popped it on just to check for the fit. And this is what it looks like up close. This is the front. As you can see the zip is on there that's how it looks like from the side there's a little bit of gaping because I'm yet to fold in the dart on the front and on the back so that would this would go away once I fold in the back and the front darts into the waistline but that's what it looks like and let's zoom in bring you in a bit closer here we go it is quite fitted because personally I like my shorts to be fitted on my body because I have full thighs and I don't have a thigh gap. What I found with loose shorts is as I wear the shorts it starts to ride up so I'd rather have a fitted pair like this um, really nice and snug around so as I'm walking I know nothing is riding up everything is staying where they are meant to be which is right down there. Now moving on to the waistband, I already have them fused with interfacing on the wrong side of the material and I'm just putting right sides together. I'm joining them along the side seam and along the center back. You need to leave the center front edge open because that's how you're going to be connecting them together. So after joining them along the side and back seams, I have put right sides together and I'm going to be sewing from the front edge all the way across the top and down the front like this. You want to create a block that would overlap on the front which is where your button would sit. That extension is how much you extended your flyby which was roughly two inches. That's how much you would need to sew in by. Now after stitching it like this you need to go back in to trim down the corners and trim down the edge that you're going to be turning inside out like so. You need to do this for the left and the right hand side. Turn it inside out. Give your waistband a nice press because after doing that you will need to connect it to the waistline of the shorts. Now this is what the waistband is looking like after turning it inside out and giving it a nice press. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to grab my shorts and connect it in two steps to the waistband. Ensure that before you stitch your shorts into the waistband, you either sew away your darts or you pleat your darts into the waistband. Now I'm pinning it and attaching it in this direction first. And then after doing that, I'm going to go back in 
and fold over the other side of the waistband to conceal the seam that we just did and to cover that edge like so. Now you can just take this to your machine and sew down using a very narrow edge stitch or you can add some pins first like I've done here. That will just ensure that everything is already pre-folded and pre-pressed before you are doing your stitch to finish off the waistband. So after doing this, I'm going to go to my machine and finish off the waistband into the waistline of the shorts, taking my time to sew from one edge all the way around to the other side, trying as much as possible to match a side seam of waistband to side seam of shorts, even though this was like Mission Impossible 20, but I tried to make it work and it didn't turn out too bad. Now after doing this, and if you're happy with how your waistband fits, you can then go ahead to mark your buttonholes on this side of the waistband. Now the buttonhole has to be on the upper side of the fly and then your buttons would be on the back. You also have the option to only put one buttonhole and have a hook set on the inner side of the waistband. It's up to you, but I wanted two buttons. Now I'm just going in here with my domestic machine to fix in the button holes for my buttons measuring at necessary points and once i was done doing that i went ahead to hand sew my buttons on the other side of the waistband now the last step after this was to go back in to finish off the hemline of the shorts which i essentially just overlocked and then after overlocking i folded them in once and stitched it all the way across So I am done with making the shorts. I literally just cut a piece of the same fabric and tied it as a tube top so you guys could clearly see what the short fits like around the waist and around the thighs as well. I am surprised and very pleased with the outcome because trousers and shorts are things that I generally do not make a lot on my channel and for someone who has full thighs and full hips, Let's just say I don't like to draw all the attention to the lower region of my body, but this fits really nicely. It's very comfortable. There's not a lot of wiggle room because the fabric does not have stretch. So it's something that when I sit, when I squat, I just have to be mindful. But if you're going to be making one for yourself, I say you can add ease or make it a little bit looser if this sort of like super snug fit is not your style. But this turned out so, so nice. Mm. 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 like it turned out so nice it's ridiculous it's something that i think what i really like about the shorts is the print has a lot of different colors in it which means that i can wear it with purple with red with yellow with blue with black with cream because it's like a multicolor print so i know i'll be able to wear it with different types of tops aside this like <laughs> this makeshift stuff that I quickly did so you guys could just see what the finished shorts look like But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section down below Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed I'm going to be sharing photos on Instagram at Kim Dave Design So make sure to follow me if you don't follow me already But with that being said, I'm going to pack I'm going somewhere this weekend These shorts cannot just be made in vain I need to find somewhere to go this weekend Like somewhere warm it might even be the UK, I don't mind, just somewhere to show off my hard work. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm going to share the links for the Kim Day PDF trouser pattern, where I got this fabric, and any other information that I think you guys would find useful. With that being said, until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are. Bye!